I have here a Synology DS1821 Plus. Let's take it out of the box, get a look at it, talk about what it's capable of, and give a bit of an overview of how I'm going to be using this. So there's a few different companies that make really nice NAS hardware if you need to store and serve and access and so on data and files locally and even remotely. And I've been a Synology user for quite a while. I had a 5 bay a long way back. I expanded up to a 12 bay. I've reduced down to a 2 bay. And now I'm feeling the need to, to spool up again. So part of that's based on the fact that I'm going to explore the idea of ripping some physical media again and serving that to my home theater and into my living room entertainment zones. And I want to, I need more storage than the 2 bay provides to be able to do that. I don't want to go nuts with it. That's why I bought the 8, not the 12. But I also use my NAS for a lot of other personal and like personal business kind of stuff. Um, I have it sync actually four different OneDrive accounts so that I have a local copy of all that because I don't want my only, uh, my, my only copy of all of that to be in the cloud. We have family photos, uh, personal financial documents, you know, all, all that kind of stuff, uh, family videos and whatever. Um, I don't want that only in in Microsoft's hands or in a cloud server hands. I want a copy of it uh, locally in case my account ever gets blown out or I lose access to it. It would be a travesty to lose uh, lose some of that stuff. We've actually been in the middle these last few months. My grandfather passed away last year and I kind of took up the responsibility for the family of taking um, some thousands and thousands of his photos, uh, my, my mom and aunts and uncles and all that stuff going all the way back to like the 30s through, through their whole lifetime and so on, and getting that stuff digitized. So um, I'm basically, and we'll be doing the same pretty soon actually with, with my childhood and family photos, pre-digital camera, and my wife's as well, and get all of this stuff digitized and organized and saved and stored for the future generations of our family to, to always have it. So a bunch of different disparate projects like that. At some point I wanna add cameras still to our house we did a lot in our home automation system and our control four system, but we never did actually add cameras. There's a couple places around the house where we've still got wire hanging down where a, where a camera was intended to go eight years later. I haven't put one there. I've always found other electronics to buy with more priority, but I, but I still very much want those. So, you know, this could be our surveillance station. And then doing the YouTube channel, I'm generating a lot of content, a lot of video content, photo-based content, all of my projects, my editing projects for the videos that I'm publishing, stuff like that. I don't want to just make a project or record some content, you know, make make the edit, put it on YouTube. I want those assets. I don't I don't know when and how and if I might want to leverage and use them again or I might need to go back to a specific video and pull something out, but I don't want to just throw that stuff away. I want to retain it. It makes sense to do that locally. I'm better than halfway full on my on my DS220. It's got two 12 terabyte drives in it. It's set up as a mirror for redundancy. I, I can see a road in the not too distant future where we probably fill that fill that up. And so e expanding that just makes a lot of sense in conjunction with the idea of storing and serving media rips. So I went for the DS1812. Um, I didn't want to I didn't really want to consider the five or the six. I think the eight, the eight's kind of a sweet spot, both in terms of its capacity and capability, relative to what you pay for it. I, true, the the six bay actually isn't that much cheaper than the eight bay. However, the twelve bay is a good bit more expensive than the eight bay. And the way that you set up storage volumes and stuff on the Synology within a single storage volume caps out for most of their devices at the hundred and eight terabyte range. So even if I go down this physical media road and I, I end up with just a massive amount of stuff locally again, and you're looking at drives available nowadays in like the 16 to 18 terabyte range, if you do one drive redundancy in an eight bay drive with 18 slash maybe some 16 terabyte drives, you basically saturate one maximal 108 terabyte Synology data volume. And so I think that's perfect. If you were to have a 12 bay and you loaded it with more drives, you'd have to end up making multiple volumes. There's a little bit more maintenance and administration that goes along with that. Not terrible, but, but it is part of the, the dynamics of using the device. 
And I think there's also just a limit to how many drives do you really want to be in an, in an array. If you're going for a 12 bay NAS, I would very much prefer or recommend or assume that I would be doing two drive of safety, which means you actually only have 10 usable drives for data. However, in an eight bay, I think it's reasonable to do one, one, one parity drive, one safety drive, which gives you seven. So for the cost delta between the DS18 and the DS24, needing to go from one drive protection to two drive protection, the 108 terabyte volume limit, and all that sort of thing, again, to me, this just represented the sweet spot. And if I fill this thing up with 18s and I've got it loaded with content, 108 terabyte volume, full to capacity, and I need to add something, you can add expansion bays to this, or for relatively close to the cost of a single DS24, I could just go buy another DS18. So that, that's another way to go. And then they would be completely independent, managed completely separately, have maximized volumes and all of that. So that led me to this. I think this is, I think this is the right level of capability, um, storage volume and, and performance and all of that for the price. So let's take a look at it. Let's see what we, what we get in here. My head cut off, but watching the box is more important. So double box with a nice handle. There's box number two. All right, so we have a mini box of accessories. We have not one, but two ethernet cables. Of course, have a power cord, keys. There we go, keys to lock and unlock the NAS, and a bag of screws. Most of the time with these Synologies nowadays, the drives are just kind of clip in, clip out, but these have a lot of expansion and other functionality as well for SSD drives and extra RAM and so on. And then of course we have a little quick installation guide. Some foam here. And really nice packaging, very well protected. I've used them for so long that really, Synology is just like my default choice for a NAS. Uh, QNAP is great, I'm sure. Maybe some other bands are awesome. I've never had a problem with the Synology. And so for, geez, what, close to a decade, um, all the times that I've needed an ass, I've gone with this brand. I've recommended it to friends and it's been positive experiences every time. Let's get the plastic off. And great packaging, excellent build quality. If we take a look at the front, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drive bays, individual lights, status lights for each one, main status light for the unit, an alert light, power button, and then we have LAN 1, LAN 2, LAN 3, and LAN 4 data lights. If we take a look at how these bays mount, Click in, click out. They have these really easy pull tab clips, one for each side. You just clip, you set, you take the clips off, you set your drives in, you snap them, insert, lock it down. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Take a look at the back. We have a couple of fans. Not sure how loud this thing will be, quite honestly, but that doesn't really impact me. The benefits of having your rack and your tech in a closed door room away. Of course we have power cord connection, a lot of expansion, eSATA, one, two, three USBs, and actually two eSATA ports. So a lot of capability if you wanted to hang off and add extra drives to it. Four LAN ports supporting link aggregation and all that stuff. I'm not sure actually this some um, drive type of expansion. Now you can put I'm not going to unscrew it. I believe this is the location for SSD cache drives. There should be at least two ports in there. So you can raid your cache 
um, as well as inside the ability to expand the RAM. I'm not really expecting to do that with mine, uh, quite honestly. I've been watching some other folks that have done that on various YouTube channels and actually measured the performance differences. And I don't think I see perhaps the merits in, in that for myself. I don't think the cache drive is gonna matter for what I'm doing. So spec-wise, just to cover it in here, we do have an AMD Ryzen V1500B 64-bit processor, four core, 2.2 gigahertz. There is four gig of RAM installed with the ability to add up to a maximum of 32 gig of RAM across the two slots. I'm just gonna try it with the four. Again, based on what I've been seeing, I don't think I'll really need more than that, but with a bigger NAS, more capability, particularly if I end up doing the surveillance kind of stuff, maybe, maybe there'd be a need for more RAM, but I'm not gonna prematurely add it. Of course, eight bays, hot swappable, the four LAN ports with link aggregation. Those USB ports are USB 3.2 Gen 1. So yeah, that's a quick look at the DS1821 Plus. I don't know why, I just find devices like this fun. I think it's fun to, it's like being an IT professional, right? Setting up, setting up a NAS, putting some stuff on it, seeing what you can use it for, having some fun with it, and taking the load off of a lot of your local individual computers. So I don't sync OneDrive, large OneDrive, folder sizes to our local PCs anymore. We just, we always access it on here. And again, having, having the always access without needing to download on the fly from OneDrive or wherever it might be to get those family photos, to get those files and so on. It's really great. So $999.99 and a pretty high pedigree. So I, I'll be talking about this more as I set it up and particularly under the, uh, under the umbrella of, again, ripping and serving local media in some coming videos. So check back, stay tuned. Let me know if you have any questions, if there's something that I can answer, show, or demonstrate with this, and I will certainly try to try to do so. And yeah, so please like and subscribe. Look down in the description for some ways to support the channel, and come on back for more. Stay tuned, and thanks for watching.